And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on the 30th of May, 2009. Whoa. We're making it through, huh? Long, long way. Hmm. Anyway, want to say thanks a lot to Grimner for putting me out there with uh, in the world on the internet with all the different sites he plays with. And the bots and the bodies of the real liberty media dot com. We always say hey to those folks out there that come and play and chitter chatter in the chat room and use the site for all the different things you can find on the site. And we're going to say hello to Barman and Grimner again. Moose Girl, DC Brackets. Anti underscore Asmo, Chalcedony, uh, Graham Z, I be Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rome's Vanna Wyatt, Weather Dork, Z Beth Z, Phantom, Anti Circle, but she's out walking the dog, so she's logged in, uh, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, me, Frumpy, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Kiss underscore, Sock Puppet, Smod As, Van Meter, and Vinny Tawarez, the Mexican imposter. Anyway, I'm going to give some links that I found a shot this time around on 20% off. And uh, I found a couple of interesting things. Same old, well, it's not like... Uh, you're going to hear anything new here. I, I probably much guarantee that unless you're new. The topics are usually pretty much predictable because hmm, the things that matter are being done wrong. And the things that are presented to you as good for you are usually fatal to, hey, what the fuck were you thinking? And I'm here to bring all that fun knowledge to your table so you can enjoy <laughs> enjoy it i guess because the one thing i i think people have overlooked is we're all in this together at the level we're at so the amount of time that we spend you know not agreeing and taking shit personal and all that is it's just wasted time because uh i think the goal of what we're trying to accomplish you know outside of just doing something with your dead time when you're not committed to other things, go play on the internet. But sometimes this stuff can, you know, open a doorway that you didn't know was there or lead you down some uh, path that you didn't even know you was looking for. So uh, I'm going to start tonight's show out with a little link I picked up. Oh, I might not read all of yeah, I might read all of it. It's not that long. But the title is <clears throat> The Ongoing destruction of the minds of children hey honey and uh it goes well, who wrote this thing i usually try to give the whoever right wrote it some credit ah it says the future of freedom foundation by gary d barnett there can be no greater stretch of arbitrary power than to seize children from their parents teach them whatever the authorities decree they shall be taught and expropriate from the parents the funds to pay for the procedure isbel patterson said that now, compulsory compulsory schooling is a travesty to call it education is absurd real education is lifelong learning as an individual while compulsory public schooling is the indoctrination of children as a collective exercise to bring all down to the lowest level. Wow, let's see if I got any uh, comments on my pod podcast this evening. I guess everything's going good. I've said hello to the bots and the bodies. So I will assume we're connected tonight and everything went well for a change. I have some new headphones coming in sometime in the, I don't know, tomorrow's supposedly it's some kind of holiday, or today was, I don't know, maybe tomorrow. They might be in tomorrow. If they are, Dork Table will be on new gear.
people. This will be the last, the last time I use my trusty headset that I've had for a while now. Back to my story. Prisons called schools are simply the forced means to stifle individual brilliance while promoting sameness and monotony. The result of this brainwashing is meant to teach children to obey orders and to be satisfied spending their lives in a virtual cage of ignorance to never become entrepreneurs and dissenters. With the recent death of the great John Taylor Gatto, the loss of a giant is evident. He was not only a pioneer in real education, but he discovered the true nature and genius that exists in so many children. The controllers who use the government school system as a way to dumb down the masses fully understand this potential genius. There are, they are very fearful of it. So fearful, in fact, that more than 100 years ago, they designed a mandatory school system as a way to control the common people by training them to be good citizens and members of a collective society instead of individuals. The few could continue to control the many. The experiment called compulsory schooling, now referred to as public education, began in Massachusetts in 1852 and became widespread. Here, let me post a copy of this. I don't think of that until it's too late. One moment, I will get back to my story after I finish stalling so I could post this link of which I am reading for your audio entertainment today. Ah, uh, where was I? Uh, public compulsory. But, uh, children were in public school. Since that time, education, as administered by the state, has been a horrible failure. If learning was the desired end, but learning and knowledge were never the goals of forced schooling, training the young to honor authorita. Discipline and nationalism were the true goals sought. In that regard, public schooling has been completely successful. These institutions become the vehicle used to teach children to be managed instead of managing themselves. They have produced a soft society consumed by doubt and incompetence, and one that can function only as a mass. In order to change this dynamic, a real education is necessary, but so long as parents continue to shirk their responsibility by allowing unknown state employees to raise and train their children, things can only get worse. Wow, that's hard to believe. John Gatto knew that teaching, reading, writing, and arithmetic could be accomplished in as few as 100 hours. Oh, wow, really? The improvement of those skills would be self-taught at the appropriate time and place. As self-taught persons are far more advanced than those subject to and dependent on mass schooling. Any real study of most kids educated at home will expose this truth. As I see it, it is up to parents to save their own children. That will not be an easy task as most parents are products of the same state schooling system that exists today. And were taught long ago not to rock the boat or question authorita. Everything should be questioned and everything should be scrutinized. Questioning authority is the bane of the state apparatus which is the reason compulsory schooling was implemented in the first place. It continues unabated as the dominant training discipline of this country's young. Take a look around and you may be shocked how many have lost their imagination, how many seek counseling, feel inadequate, and consider suicide. How many do you know who manage their lives by taking prescription drugs 
How many are bored, emotionally wrecked, and afraid? Most of these people, a very large portion of the population, can no longer function as individuals. Such behavior should be expected as the product turned out by the mandatory government systems school system has little ability to think and act without guidance. That is a direct result of being a prisoner of state-sponsored indoctrination centers from infancy to adulthood. That is why public schooling is anath... An uh, an uh, hmm, new word for me. Anathema <laughs> to free thinking, self-reliant and responsible individuals. Boy, then they throw in some new word I've never seen. I like that. Mass schooling guarantees a weak and compliant population, one that has lost the ability to think critically. It is an all-consuming addiction to mediocrity and an escape from excellence. No society can continue to be free and prosper under such conditions. Why, as John Gatto asked, are we turning our kids over to total strangers who can mold their minds with the state propaganda for 12 years? It is time for parents to take back the children and rescue them from a life of dependency. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, any statist, whether they want to admit it, that's pretty much what they think, how they behave. Where are we at in the chat? Let's we'll see if anybody was paying any damn attention to my crazy link tonight about the children's in the public school situation. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like Anti and Ann Will then got into have a few things to say about it. So, well, just wanted to do a little reading, maybe throw an opinion out there or two. But um, hmm. my opinion about the state is whatever the state wants for us is only good for the people that voted in it in, and that is not the public. And the, the state admits that they don't weigh the, the public's opinion in when they make their decisions. They, they vote for you because you're not smart enough to know what the fuck they're talking about in the first place. So let's just leave the little guy out of it. They, they put us here to decide for them. Not, not to represent them like they claim. It's all a bunch of shit. In school, that's just the beginning of it, you know. So, like me, if you su I sucked at school. I was in the, in the overall. I had a few good years, but I, I gave up quickly. And as I look back, the, the older I got, the less concerned or impressed I was with the old education uh, format. I mean, where was it going to get you? What could you not tell somebody that a piece of paper was going to prove any different? And in those days, it wasn't hard to make a piece of paper or buy a piece of paper. <laughs> Pretend you had a piece of paper. Tell them, here, here's the, yeah, this is where I went to school. Who's going to bother with checking unless you act like a total dumbass that could never have entered the doors of the school that you wrote down? Back in the day, it was more of a pain in the ass for them to prove that you didn't than it was for you to fuck up your job and show them they should have never hired you. So, hmm. Uh, all, all that's gone on the last, say, 40 years is uh, the ability to look like you can catch the con has improved. But it's just now it's, it's electronic. So people that don't know how to read, read and write in, uh, it's like, what is that called? Uh, when you handwrite. Handwriting. What do they call handwriting now? some other name for it but cursive that's what they called it the last couple years I've been listening to this so I can write in cursive and I can print and I got uh, you know your basic 1970s talents I guess things that we all grew up knew how to do read the clock uh, read a map you know tell tell time and shit like that uh, whether it's dark out or light, you know, we learn how to identify shit. But <laughs> outside of that, I don't, I have no idea what the purpose of school was outside of the things I'm reading now about it, which is because if I had a gun, I would have learned how to comply and give in and do as I'm told and be threatened and follow the orders. But I guess it didn't go long enough for that um, idea to grab a hold of me. 
Lucky me. And now I've got another extra special link for you fuckers out there in Radio Land tonight. And we all know I've got a fascination with the concept of inoculation. And my research that I've done, and the people I believe seem to disagree with the government, you know, what the government tells you and what CDC says is safe and FDA and all this crap, all these government agencies that they're just making money off people's ignorance, basically. Anyway, and this is an example of, of the proof is on the person trusting the government. And this little baby is called Government Research Confirms Measles Outbreaks are transmitted by the vaccinated. Um, and this is, it's all it says here is, I'll copy and paste a co copy of this thing here too again. I'll try to remember to do it first. <laughs> I'm learning, but you guys uh, got me interested. Even my wife said, hey, why don't you read a couple links and see how that goes for you. So I'm taking the advice of the wife. And uh, this is, says it was written by collective evolution but i don't see it just one name on here so we'll just go with that collective evolution maybe it's just the screen name like i use so what we have in brief it says on the beginning of this here epic tale the facts research reveals that a vaccinated individual not only can become infected with measles but can also spread it to others who are also vaccinated against it, disproving that multiple doses of MMR are 97% effective. Sorry about the laughing, but I'm an anti... I don't believe in any of this. Stick needles in me, mister. That sounds like a brilliant idea. Save me from danger and illness. Sounds like a load of shit. Anyway, reflect on... A lot of awareness has been created regarding the pharmaceutical industry and the harm their products are doing. Why, when it comes to vaccines, are we still hesitant to even look at the evidence? Well, there's probably laws written that you can't look at the evidence. They do this stuff before they, as they're preparing to experiment on the public with some crap, the government is fed these laws to prepare the public for this so that when this happens you can't sue them they wrote a law back in like 1986 you can't sue us we're experimenting we're not responsible for your ignorance you're the ignorant shit that's out there letting us experiment on you read the fine print back to my story i have a very uh, nasty opinion about vaccines so if you're not interested, I don't. I understand, but well, there's two sides to this coin. So back to the story. One of the fundamental errors in thinking about measles vaccine effectiveness is that receipt of measles, mumps, rubella vaccine equates to bona fide immunity against measles virus. Indeed, it is commonly claimed by health organizations like the CDC that receiving two doses of the MMR vaccine is 97% effective in preventing measles, despite a voluminous body of contradictory evidence from epidemiology and clinical experience. And common sense, too, because, I mean, if you're, if you're old enough to remember the 70s or the 60s, then we have a whole different outlook on this whole thing. And if you're just growing up and you'd have never had any of this, they're childhood diseases. And if you're a teenager, what are the odds of getting it when you're a teenager? I mean, you, you were obviously didn't pick it up when you were a kid. So it just seems to me that in over the years that logic has eluded many of us and we live in this political and what medical fantasy land of repeat the doctor and the politician they know what they're talking about back to my story is this an incredible story people or what this erroneous thinking has led the public media and 
government alike to attribute the origin of measles outbreaks, such as the one reported at Disney in 2015, and in which led lead to the passing. Oh no, I guess it should have been and which led to the passing of SB 277 that year, stripping vaccine exemptions for all but medical reasons in California to the non-vaccinated. Even though 18% of the measles cases occurred in those who had been vaccinated against it. <laughs> That's the whole point. Is I, I understand it this way. Other people don't seem to. When they give you the inoculation, that's what you're getting. You're getting the disease so that you can build an immunity to the disease. Well, if you have the fucking thing, then guess what? You're, you can, other people can contract it from you while you're carrying it for a while. How do they overlook the obvious and sneak the... It's like a detail. Or they're sneaking this through without nobody noticing. To me... I, I don't know, if you punch me in the nose and my nose bleeds, I'll bet you it's because you punch me in the nose. It ain't because, you know, uh, I rolled out of bed. <laughs> nah, yeah, maybe that was a bad example of ridiculous, but that was how ridiculous some of this stuff sounds to me when I hear them repeat it back to me. It's just insane. Anyway. Uh, the vaccine, back to my epic story. The vaccine's obvious fallibility is also indicated by the fact that the CDC now requires two doses. Uh, requires. Not, not only is it not working, but they want you to get it twice. <laughs> I mean, 18% of the time, for something to fail that much in a medical thing is, uh, that's not good. You're, you're one in five. I mean, wow. Considering that if you don't bother at all, you're that's 100%. But now you dropped it down to, well, 20% because you took the shot. So what we're being told is just obviously the, the bass backwards way of what the truth is. Back to my epic story. This is kind of fun. But the problems surrounding the failing MMR vaccine go much deeper. First, they carry profound health risks, over 25 of which we have indexed here. MMR vaccine dangers, including increased autism risk, which a senior CDC scientist confessed his agency covered up, which do not justify the risk, given the measles is not only not deadly, but confers significant health benefits that have been validated in the biomedical literature. Because yeah, a lot of us talk about when we were kids, they had a, if somebody got the measles, they had a party for the kids on the block so that they could all just get it over with instead of one case after the other. They just knock it all out in a short period of time and everybody was back to normal. And what you got were these little spots on your skin and that's it was uncomfortable, maybe a little fever for a bit. But all this turning this little childhood disease into a, a nightmare is probably the way Big Pharma operates. You know, they take the truth away from you so you're stupid. And they feed you this great big lie and over-exaggerate like they did with cannabis. Smoke pot turns you into a bat. Okay, it's against the law. And they did the same fucking thing. The same games being played here with this uh, MM, what is this? MMR vaccine. I mean, think about how many things that we use every day that have dangers attached to it, you know. If it's not full of gas or running on electricity or something that could blow up, explode, shock you, you know, some damage can go. You, if a water pipe exploded in your face, you might have a problem seeing for a couple of days. You know, little, just incidental things, but there there are common enemies are <laughs> household accidents. Furniture, for example, that doesn't want to stay put in the middle of the night, moves out in front of you, and then when dressed when you're walking, you just kick right into it because it moved. Shit like that. Like this MMR crap. Uh, anyway, I'll try to finish this story, but wow, the more I read it, I think it just reading this version of the truth that I seem to agree with makes the other version of the truth sound really bad. <laughs> Back to my epic tale. 
Uh, second, not only does the MMR vaccine fail to consistently confer immunity, but those who have been immunized with two doses of MMR vaccine can still transmit the infection to others. A phenomena no one is reporting on in the rush to blame the non or minimally vaccinated for the outbreak. A childhood disease that the whole point of, well, in my day, this is what we were taught. The reason you get it is so that your body can build an immunity up to fight it. And that's the easiest way for your body to do it. It's nature doing its thing. You'll have maybe seven to ten days. You have little bumps. You might not feel good. You have a little fever for a bit. But you'll get over it and everything will be back to normal. And you'll come out of it stronger and never get that sickening little two-week in, you know, inconvenience again. And with natural selection in my day, some of us were just freaking immune. I never got them. Other kids got them. I went around the other kids. I never got them. But I was an active, I played in the dirt, and I was in a swimming pool and on a bicycle, all that shit. S um, little scooters my dad, what did they call them, mini bikes and little go-karts and shit. He had us out there, you know, in the real world physical, getting dirty, doing shit, learning how to take things apart and whatnot. So I guess I was immune to all that weaker I, we just thought it was for weaker kids, me and my brother. We didn't think nothing of uh, measles when we were growing up. And the kids that got them, they just had some bumps. So Anyway, back to my, <laughs> my epic tale. But then, see, we've got my past and this present. And when I speak about my past, I can only imagine by looking at the present how much it must clash and sound like no, the people didn't do that back then. But I think we did the same thing when the grown-ups would be talking and we'd hear what they were saying. We go, "Ah, oh, no, people didn't do that," because the you know that ten, twenty years difference, thirty years of a little bit of time, seems to make a big deal. You know, it actually, nineteen ninety was compared to now. It was a while ago, but to me, it's like, hey, it just happened. You know, but. No, it was 30 years ago almost. So, hmm. I guess we have to do a little bit of uh, imagining to wonder what other people think to get what they hear to see this as a good thing. Because there are thousands, millions of people out there that they would not listen to um, the story I'm reading because it goes against their indoctrination. So, you know, get back to my... Epic tale of inoculation and why you probably shouldn't bother with doing it. This finding even aroused the attention of mainstream news reporting, such as this sciencemag.org article from, 20, uh, from April 2014. Guzzle, guzzle. <laughs> Titled, Measles Outbreak Traced to Fully Vaccinated Patient for First Time. Titled, Outbreak of Measles Among Persons with Prior Evidence of Immunity, New York City, 2011. Oh, wow. See, this is even an old story, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go with that, but it's not much longer. Well, maybe it is. It's got a lot of valuable information about inoculations and probably why... You, hmm. Does it really lead anybody anywhere? I think it just says the opposite of the... Uh, popular belief in the state, what the state promotes, and how they preach to us. Because the state knows what's good for us. Now, I don't know how they figure this out. I guess from the experimenting on his part. And uh, I've posted the old Bill Clinton apology to the American citizen for experimenting on you without your consent or knowledge. <laughs> and I, it amazes me to this day how few people really, eh, so what, it's just Clinton. Let's see. Hmm. Uh-oh. What am I causing? Hmm. Taking just a second to scan over the chat and see if anything exciting is going in. Oh. 
Miss Mary is weed waddering out there in the old Bar- Booneyville town. And Grimner, I don't know, Grimner's just running the site. Hey, Miss Kate and DC Brackets and eh, there's a few people chitter chattering about this, that, and the other as I read my way into promiscuity. But, uh, Now, I'm probably not going to get laid reading any of these great stories, huh? Hey, honey? Huh? 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 Wow, didn't even excite sir. Go figure. (laughs) Here I am reading these great stories about the important situations at the tip of your uh, fingers. You You could reach out and actually touch somebody, and you know what they might have? They might have been inoculated by the MMR vaccine. Then you know what happens? Guess what? Hmm. Well, if Big Pharma's right and they're betting on it, I would say that you're going to get MMR. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, it's like paint. You know, if if I slap you on your hand with wet paint and then you turn around and slap somebody else, there's going to be wet paint on your hand too. And that chain is going to go on until... For a while, because there's always going to be a little bit of residue of that paint. So it's the same thing. you know. <laughs> getting the shot is giving you the illness. How can you not understand? I, I must be dumber than a bowl of hammers because uh, that principle is just always stuck right out in my face. You know, They're cause and effect. You know, if you do certain things, you're going to get a result. And... As much as I'm not a medical professional, uh, I know that you cannot get a healthy person ill unless you have something like that, you know, some kind of sickening virus that is you contract it from, you know, contact or breathe in the same air. So, in my humble opinion, what the state has done is it's talked the bonehead people amongst us, you know, the the zombie-like morons, into uh, preventative maintenance for something that they don't need. Absolutely fucking useless. In fact, the only way this would really work in the favor of Big Pharma is that if they talked enough people into using it, so then they could get everybody sick and say, "Go see, we told you, you need to be inoculated. Yeah, well, they lie. They tell you the exact opposite of the fucking thing you're looking at. It's like a magic trick, like politics. Hmm. Abuse of authority, says Miss Kate. Ah, you really bent over for that. I must have missed all the good chat. But I read that part because it caught my attention. Oh, Miss Mary is cutting onions. Isn't the only way to bring tears to your eyes. Uh-oh, have you been doing banking with the Jews against Miss, again, Miss Mary? What's going on here? <laughs> She's, com- never mind, she was complaining about crying. And it made me think of having to deal with a Jew banker, you know, named Fritz. Yeah, Fritz Schwartz, the Jew banker. <laughs> How's that for, <laughs> Fritz Schwartz. <laughs> Put an onion in the freezer for later, she says. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I will continue on with my epic sagas as soon as I locate the next jewel of the Nile that I have found for your listening entertainment. I got a Russian story. You guys like Russian stories. I know that. Uh, Here we go. I got a gem called. uh, I haven't read the thing, but I just read the, the headline and thought it might be interesting. Let me take a deep breath for this. And it was written the 24th of April. It says it's a six-minute read, so it'll probably take me 15. Scientists prove DNA can be reprogrammed by our own words. Wow. Russian scientists prove DNA can be reprogrammed by just our words and Aha! Other outside frequencies. Ah. The human DNA is a biological internet ha, and can be reprogrammed. Hey, this could just be some bullshit jargon to warn you about what's coming on the internet. 
but it's a fun story. Russian scientific research explains. Now, this is written in English, too, by the way, about Russians. Think about that. Translation, people. Russians wrote it. Okay. The human supernatural phenomena, such as clairvoyance, intuition, spontaneous, spontaneous, <laughs> and remote acts of healing, self-healing, affirmation techniques, unusual light auras around people, namely spiritual masters, minds, influence on weather patterns, and much more. In addition, there is evidence for a whole new type of medicine in which DNA can be influenced and reprogrammed by words and frequencies without cutting out and replacing single genes. Only 10% of our DNA is being used for building proteins. It is this subset of DNA that is of interest to Western researchers and is being examined and categorized. The other 90% are considered junk DNA. The, Rus the Russian researchers, however, convinced that nature was not dumb, joined linguistics and geneticists in a venture to explore those 90% of junk DNA. Hmm. Their results, findings, and conclusions are simply revolutionary. According to them, our DNA is not only responsible for the construction of our body, but also serves as data storage and in communication. Hmm. The Russian linguists found that the genetic code, especially in the apparently useless 90%, follows the same rules as all our human languages. To this end, they compared the rules of syntax, the way in which words are put together to form phrases and sentences, semantics, the study of meaning in language forms, and the basic rules of grammar. They found that the alkalines of our DNA follow a regular grammar and do have set rules just like our languages. So human languages do not appear coincidentally but are a reflection of our inherent DNA. Wow, these people sure know a lot of shit. I wonder how they come to these conclusions. You know, it's like, wait a minute. Because it sounds to me like my proof theory all just right in my own face, right? Because proof to me is always the story that I like the best. So, what difference does it make if it makes any sense? I mean, crying out, people believe there was a Jesus and all that religious stuff. So, you know, if I want to believe that my DNA can be reprogrammed by talking to it, see, to me, that's no more crazy than thinking that I'm going to save my soul by uh, speaking to a certain uh, entity of the uh, religious type, if you know what I mean. It, or denounce it, or whatever the fuck the game is in that religion, if you go along with these people. You too get a sense of the group and believe, and therefore whatever you believe is real. So, well, that's how I look at it. And I'm looking at, now, if I want to believe what I just read is true, then it's true doesn't matter if it isn't true I believe it and this is the common problem that we seem to share amongst the core of the population I guess is everybody believes something different but they do, but they don't they think they do because it's in your face it's in society it's in this law and politics and education but is it in you know within your reach when you know when I look at Cirque, I don't see government and state and school and church and all that. I see Cirque. So, in my opinion, all that stuff's all out there in you know, the. It's in the electronic world. It's not. It's real if I want it to be. If I don't want it to be, then it isn't. So I just figure that everybody else operates on some form of that. But that. <laughs> I come from a different train of um, schooling than the rest of you, that which was what the first link was about. The educators failed miserably with me, and the only agreement amongst the grown-ups was uh, it was all my fault because I didn't care. 
they couldn't keep me interested in what they wanted me to know. I always thought there was something more interesting down the road somewhere. Well, not always, but for a while. And uh, it took me a, a relatively long time of life to get settled down and comfortable about anything. I've been a rambler and a rover, like not like Vinny, but I did that thing for some period of time. Settled down for a while, sort of. Better part of 10 years where I didn't do much going anywhere. And then uh, now, jeez, now I haven't budged my ass in years, and I love it. Hmm. My biggest problem is going uh, going out to the into the real world, and, and there might be some road work or some obstacle that I have to walk around, and that that's it. Nothing it's so boring. I don't know. Maybe I need to go rob a gas station to bring some excitement to town. Ha, ha, ha. The gas stations here don't have attendance. It's those um, automatic pump things you put a card into. So technology has, it's gotten them where, uh, where they need to be to the point we're at today, but hasn't replaced everything yet. I don't see that coming either. I think the, the people that use the retail outlets and such, they like the human touch. I think that uh, in this society, if they were threatened with losing the human touch, somebody to, to talk to and help sort out their problems, they wouldn't like it. And there's an equal amount of people that are just glued to these damn cell phones and all that. But I still think that uh, to them, it's not it's not the same crutch as it was where I'm from. Uh, I think people still talk to each other here enough nose to nose so that... Uh, that replacing the human experience with a machine hasn't completely enthralled them yet. They haven't, you know, wanted, like Grimm wants his meteor. They haven't got to that part yet. They're still in the neighborly, be nice to the other guy kind of thing. So, hmm. I don't understand it myself. I cannot figure it out. Maybe it's something in the water here or uh, the lack of police or whatever the fuck it is. Because there's other places in the country I've read about. They got problems. So, you know, when you have problems in one pl place in a country, well, then it brings the, it's like being graded on the curve. You bring everybody down with your little inconvenience in the east or the west. Hmm. Or I could have said west, east. It wouldn't matter. Where I'm at's not important. It was more the, hmm. what is the point of, the point of, Somebody's always going to shit in the punch bowl to see what will happen. And it's always a matter of how many people are involved. And the fewer people are involved, the more responsible people behave because, well, you're being looked at physically. So you kind of tend to either be a complete dick or mind yourself. And in small places, uh, I've learned that everybody knows who does what after a period of time. Your behavior gives you away by just being whatever you are will show it, show you, show your peers, whatever your group is you're in, what they're dealing with. And it's no different sitting in the bar or going to the checkout line at the grocery store. There's protocols and, and there's ways to behave in public that we don't even talk about. We just know it. You know, somebody will... Um, put their stuff down and they got these little things to separate them on the conveyor belt and what i've noticed about the store people is the, the person that's waiting in line is always very patient and helpful they're not in a rush to get through and hurry up and go anywhere because there ain't nowhere to go. it's so small here there's you know it's just uh a different fucking completely separate world than I was ever expecting to be in. So, hmm. Anyway, let me get back to my exciting stories. I was just reminiscing about my days gone and comparing them to the days I got. And the ones I got are pretty fucking good. And I keep reading and hearing, like the stories I've been reading tonight, just very unpleasant, um, hmm, disappointing things that... If we were told the truth about stuff, would we be, we couldn't be where we are. This, 
Solid product of being lied to in the first place. See what they're saying on the chat about that. See if I got anybody interested in my topic t tonight. Hmm. Oh, no, Grimner's talking about music. Leon Redbone's dead? Oh, no shit. I remember the name, Leon Redbone. He did some off the wall. He had a real strange voice, and he played a guitar. That's about all I much, much, all the most I can remember about him. But apparently, he was 69 years old, and now he's not. <laughs> Rolling Stone said he's dead. Well, I believe him. I ain't going to go to his house and try to prove he's really alive and hiding out from the IRS. I wonder if any of these major celebrity deaths have ever been <laughs> faked so that they could hide from the IRS. Because <laughs> they owed the IRS $8 million in back taxes. <laughs> so it was cheaper just to fake, you know, to kill somebody and, and have them be them in the death world. But I think a lot of things that other people don't seem to put, I don't know. I like this lately. I've been on this idea about if the money was freaking real, why isn't anybody out there that's got money do anything that's not a complete freaking disaster for the people they help? Like, oh, I don't know. Bill Gates ring a bell with any of you out there in Radio Land or ever here to this guy? This guy claims that he invented the interwebs, baby. Without him, we wouldn't have an internet to play on. So, hmm. But, I think that uh, the, all that medical shit he's been doing with the inoculations all over the Africa. and Where else has he been? I guess he's been all over the globe. What was that other one? The one they were Gardasil or something the, doing the girls in with. Then they're trying to convince the boys that they could get girl diseases and you need this too. How do they get away with this crap? I mean, who? All I can imagine in my mind is that looking on to us as a public is a table full of people going, well, how can we skin these idiots this week? Hmm? Anybody got any ideas? No, Frank, we, we, we did anal last week. Let's try something different. But this is how I how I see how do you explain that any more clearly than that? Uh, we're being lied to hmm, about every fucking thing, and when you can find the truth in something, it's usually about the date or maybe the person that wrote it. <laughs> and then maybe they spelled a name right. But hmm. I'll give you an example. There's the Abraham Lincoln I grew up with in school, and you know parents being what they are. My parents thought they were doing a good job, and I was reciting all the crap the school was preaching to me, and I was remembering it and sending it all back. The thing was, I don't think I was believing it. <laughs> so, so anyhow, just recently, I guess, I don't know, over the last uh, seven years, I've had this internet where I can go open up links, listen to other people talk. Other versions of situations I've read about, heard about, talked about. And one of the things that got my attention recently <laughs> was about Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. And what the Civil War really was about than what we were told it was about. And then there's how they got it started. And then there's how they told us it got started. So little bits of the truth have been fed to us over periods of time. The end results of those little bits of truth were complete and total fucking lies. Like, slavery. I read the thing. I'm going to summarize it and do what Vinny does instead of open it and read it verbatim. But he didn't have a stand on slavery. He didn't give a shit about the fucking slaves. Not one way or the other way. So what was his thing? He did not care about the slaves. But. Here we are all these years later, and what did we learn in school? That link, come on children, we learned that Lincoln free all together now. Lincoln freed the slaves, children. Remember that. So they pound this crap into my head. And I've always, eh, I learned it at school, it's probably a bunch of shit. So, I listened to this uh, guy reading about Lincoln and how the 
how the Civil War started and the principles behind starting it, it was a finance war. It was a banker's war. The South didn't want to pay the damn uh, taxes. It didn't want to support the fucking um, central bank debt that Lincoln had. And Lincoln didn't want to pass up the opportunity to take some freaking resources and tax money. So they went to war and decided. And, uh, you know, history being what it is, who knows who won or who lost? I mean, what the fuck does that even mean? Everybody lost because Lincoln was a fraud. According to the history I was taught, he was a great man and he saved a lot of people. And according to what I understand now <laughs> and have for, well, a couple of years, is uh, he wasn't such a nice guy. This, this guy was an opportunist looking for the best of, for himself and his friends. Now, that could be taken as a matter of opinion, depending on what you read. So, hmm. Here we are stuck in that, that box again about, well, what is the truth? And the story that sounds best is usually the bullshit and the shit that sounds like, oh, that can't be true. That's usually the truth. I guess as adults we could all face that. We don't need to be little children's today here on in the 20% program. 20% off your sanity is a small price to pay to know the truth. <laughs> but... Again, the truth. What the fuck is the truth? So I get, uh, me and Vinny were talking the other day about uh, whatever we were talking about. Me and him get accused of uh, pie in the sky because we want people to be accountable for what they say and do. But we know the truth and they're not. They're not accountable. And usually when you even bring it up in conversation, eh, people don't give too much of a fuck about it. Oh, uh, we got Mr. Grimner got into my... Lincoln story. He says, what I know about Lincoln is that if you can see the top of, it, of his head, your tie is worn out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, that was pretty. Yeah. Fuck Lincoln. Ouch. Rob works. Uh, and well then, in America, 7% of all wealth is owned by 10% of peeps. Yeah, we, we all know that. That's common knowledge in the RLM. The thing that's not common knowledge is what supports this crap. How can the uh, average guy that's suffering out there in the freaking world, you know, trying to keep a family together and hold a job and and live in this little, I don't know. We have a small home, me and Sark. We just, we're modest. I don't think we're extravagant people, but there's plenty of room for for us we got a nice yard to go out and grow vegetables and sit out in which is better than some people in the city as far as space goes they have an apartment life whatever but i think it's a matter of taste because it's not about what you have it's about how you feel about where you're at is my opinion and hey Vinny. And uh, mushrooms, and everybody's happy tonight. Good. It's good to see the chitter chatters uh, get along with each other, you know. And fuck Lincoln or not, it it's the that collective bullshit that we've all been indoctrinated with, you know. And some of us have grown beyond it and can see past it, and other people are still playing in it like it's real. And outside of pity them, what what more can you really do? I mean, it sounds pompous and arrogant, but knowing knowing what that mess is, that political mess that we all see, one thing we can all agree on is bullshit. I mean, when you identify your government as a swamp, and that's cool, there's something fucking wrong with the society that it represents, as far as I can tell. I don't remember them calling the, you know, the government the swamp when I was living there. And if they had, I would have been, hey, like, let's get these fuckers out in the open so we can shoot them all. Unfortunately, they've outlawed dueling. And I kind of wish they would bring it back for politicians. And then when uh, Joe Biden sniffs some little girl, you know, then her dad can challenge him to a duel. Hey, creepy Joe, come here. I saw you sniffing on my little girl over there, you freaky weirdo, and I want to shoot you in the forehead. So, there you go. Would that stop people? See, this is what I mean is, we've been 
dumbed down and sissy down and pussy down to this point of, oh, I don't like what you say, so every time I read what you say, I'm going to write something nastier. Ooh. And that's how we are. This is, ooh. Not a lot of bullets flying in this. You know, this is just words on a chat screen. But some of these words are about bullets flying. <laughs> you know, the armchair quarterback. The guy that won the war because, you know, he was for the team that was out there shooting it up. But, hey, I was behind them. I, they had all my support, so I get the, you know, the glory of their success. Oh, no, you don't. Because the truth of the whole thing is the success of anything like that's all in your freaking head. We don't even share this. This is not like a, it's not like a contest. Like, we, we make it. I don't think. I think it looks like a contest. Oh, I know this. No, oh, I know that. Oh, I'm so wonderful. Oh, and I got a good car and a good wife and a good house. Well, sometimes that's, uh, hmm. Sometimes that doesn't matter to the guy that's listening. The guy that's listening might want to hear how miserable you are. So, <laughs> so you sound more normal, you know, more average. Because average Joe, average Joe is dumb and suffering out in the world. So don't be standing on his shoulders bragging about how good life is, you moron. <laughs> and I, I think like Vinny. Vinny's got a good life. I recognize that. Um. There's a lot of people on the Real Liberty media that I chat with who I recognize as having a good, comfortable life. Some of their skills in typing suck. How's that, Mr. Vincenzo? Uh, but, and I tell him about it when we're doing radio. He makes up words and he plays with words in ways that, hey, some of us don't get it. And I don't know. Maybe he's not taking it as seriously as some of the people that are reading it. <laughs> Anything is possible in this world if you think it's possible, I suppose. You know, uh, things are only good or bad according to the person looking on them, right? I mean, I can't judge what's good or bad for you. I can only do that for myself, I think. And... I think that society's taken it into uh, explanation and, and words and levels of chitter-chatter that have no reality to them. There is absolutely no one-size-fits-all for everything, period, because somebody will definitely go out of their way to improve it somewhere. I think that's what our biggest problem is. We're always outsmarting ourselves. Being so fucking brilliant, you know, oh, look, we made a gasoline engine. Wait a minute. No, they didn't. I think Henry Ford's first idea was a hemp-fueled engine. The, if I'm correct, I know he didn't build the car out of hemp until 43, but the original design of the engine was for hemp. Oil took over because um, Rockefeller was in, uh, I think Rockefeller was the vice president when they had their first oil glut. The end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. Had a big oil gut. What do we do with all this oil? Let's make cars and run it on them. Yeah, but the cannabis is cheaper and it's uh, cleaner. Yeah, but, uh, not cheaper, it's cleaner. But the oil was cheaper. And they had so much of it, they couldn't do any. It was like, what do we do with this mess? Hey, let's suck it out of the ground and burn it. Ay, ay, ay. So, here we are, and th this is, that's the whole, kind of the, the point of what tilted me to the direction I'm in is this, hmm, let's, let's make waste to make profit, and I started to get the idea of that, now, I didn't get it for years and years, but I think I started to in the 80s when I found out about Tesla, but what really clenched it for me was meeting Larry Woods. Larry was so concise about such a complicated thing, and he explained it in such a simple way that it just, click, oh, I get it. And it just, some part of it just internally makes sense. When you use something uh, as, a, as a fuel source or a source of power, and that source creates a waste on purpose, your results are going to be below par. 
but when you have below par results you have a a, a repeating um, profit margin that you got to keep coming back if you do things right the first time you get a customer you know for a minute if you do things wrong you got a customer for life and uh I think Larry's coil idea was one hell of a way to knock this shit out. Put at least knock it down to four or five hundred years between needing the replacement. And these things sound so pie in the sky compared to what we learn in school because they teach us the stupidest shit in school. And they limit you. They don't want you to imagine. You know, like I know I give Goober shit about his space travel, spaceship stuff. Okay, but. Uh, give me credit for this. I never bash him about his work with his his uh, batteries. No, 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 no. I'm not. Uh, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. But I think at that point of uh, that would be rude of me to do that. And when he gets on here with the same, you know, he has a few beers. Cough, 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 cough. You know, and he thinks he's being funny. Um, I can kind of, I can cope with that, you know. But to insult him over his batteries would be rude for me to do it. So, eh. But, uh, wow. The, this is what I mean about uh, we pick and choose our fights, I think is what I'm trying, to, what I was getting at. Because I was thinking about Rob and, and, uh, and Vinny. Two guys that think uh, very much alike in a lot of ways, but express theirself two opposite sides of the freaking thing so they can't find common ground and I've been there with people in my life so I'm comparing that to it you know in Vinny's absence because oh, sometimes he he just gets too anal about making a point like Vinny I got it you're just not allowing me to get it so and I might do that to him on the radio because when I'm talking, sometimes he's looking for his next story that he's going to pontificate on. And we don't listen to the other guy as closely as we should when we're doing the show. And it might make it more interesting because sometimes we're funny as hell. And sometimes we collide so badly on a topic, it's like, how the hell do you guys even talk to each other? And other times we, um, I think what we do is compromise, you know, uh, like on the God thing. I could be real harsh with my version of religion and spirituality and how people use it to benefit themselves more than use it to benefit the other guy. But what I've known of Vinny over the years, spiritual. <coughs> Hold on. Wow, that was good. Man, that was better than my first cup of coffee this morning. Sorry about that, folks. But it, I was just using Vinny and Rob and, and as a means of explaining my side of, I know we all ain't never going to get along. It's, it's just something that it's good to look forward to in the future. But right now, everybody's on fire. Everybody's got life problems. Uh, Something about what's going on in the interwebs is affecting some of us more deeply than others of us. Give me a second. Wow. That was the best roll of the day. I got to back off now. Take a little weed break and get back to the program. Yeah. There he is. Vinny's on the Real Liberty Media. I just opened up the chat. I was having a little cough down. But yeah, he's getting a little nostalgic about my buddies and buddyettes on the reallibertymedia.com chat. And, uh, you know, just, uh, I was saying the other night about the message is, is the important part. But here we are. For some reason, there's something in the, uh, in the air what have, whatever have you, we irritate each other to the point of ignoring. And then we miss the message because we can't stand to talk to each other anymore. So, hmm. I don't know what to do. Uh-oh. Somebody's going crazy on the, 
Oh, Vinny and Moose are having words tonight. Oh, no, that's not good. Oh, yeah, Grim, I'm okay. I just took too deep of a... I was trying to talk and hit the pi, you know, hit the spliff at the same time. And the spliff won. I came out second, but I got a nice buzz going on it. And then I just got distracted reading um, Vinny and Moose. Well, people, man, that's what I mean is we're all... We're all frustrated by shit that's got nothing to do with you on the internet. But you on the internet is what's in front of you, so you take out your shit on whoever you're typing at. I think I use Hansel for that sometimes when I give him a good fuck off, Hansel. Because, you know, how much negative can you read without getting, I don't know, uh, insulted? I don't know what the fucking right way to put that is. It doesn't... It doesn't physically affect me. I mean, I'm not losing sleep at night over any of this stuff. But at the moment when I read it, ooh, I can get all pissy and get all nasty and chid and think, hey, where is my white supremacy card? I'm going to slap you in the face with it right now, my friend. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm back to normal here. I'm having a Mexican moment on In a Perfect, no, not In a Perfect World, 20% off, get the right show at the right time. Here on, uh, Thursday night, but see, Cirque's down here, she's playing her game next to me, and for some reason, I still, she's still distracting while I'm doing my radio, even when she's not talking to me, and I just know she's there, it's a weird thing, this, this thing I'm doing, anyway, are we all gonna get back to, it's that threw me off reading a little, yeah, um, <laughs> threw me off reading, arguing on the RLM, but, well, that was what I was getting at, is, Ah, oh, man. We're all different people, you know. Some things are beyond one person's ability to um, tolerate. You know, it's all a matter of your upbringing, I suppose. What your 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 level for verbal beatings. <laughs> I mean, some people can say the same thing to me that somebody I don't care for says. And the person I like, I don't care what they say. It doesn't bother me. The person I don't like, it's all the attention with, hey, who the fuck you think you are writing that? And it, Vinny just wrote the same fucking thing 20 minutes ago. But if you do it, hey, wait a minute. You don't know me well enough to talk to me like that. Who the hell do you think you are? And I think that we're, uh, at some level, there's a group of us that are suffering from uh, dig me, I'm cool syndrome. And when people don't dig you, Whoa, what's wrong with you? You don't like me? I'm a wonderful guy. I will nuke you. You will like me or I will kill you. And that. What else? Wow. So I'm having my personal meltdown trying to figure out really why this has my attention tonight so deeply. Because uh, I was reading all these great links about, you know, school and inoculations and what the Russians think that you can do with your brain. And I was thinking about this. I A couple, maybe a year or two back, me and Mary were doing a, we were doing dork table. No, sir, give me a few minutes. I'm t hitting that thing too hard. But uh, we were doing dork tables and uh, shit, you made me lose my train of thought, wife. Oh, crap. Uh, what was, where was I going? Oh, my wife distracted me again. Anyway, maybe it'll come back. Maybe it won't. I hope it does, because it was probably a, a Mary story. But uh, anyway, yeah, sir, stop doing that while I'm doing radio. I keep missing my what I'm doing. <laughs> You're distracting the shit out of me. Stop it. I'm going to blame her. She blames me for stuff, and I get to blame her for stuff back. Anyway, let's do a poll on the reallibertymedia.com chat. To my hardcore four listening to me this evening, do we now or have we ever lived in a dictatorship? Yes or no? I want to get your response to that deep-rooted question. You have 30 seconds to answer. I know the answer to that. Huh. Am I well? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, he's talking to Van Meter. Donna's back. Donna got uh, to Florida from her west um, coast stop place or wherever she was. Now she's in an undisclosed location in the state of Florida where the water is safe to drink. 
but most of the people aren't safe to talk to. Oh, that's another story. Uh, what else we got going on? I they these uh, these things have thrown me off. My wife has thrown me off. Everything's uh, poet. My I must be on the wrong wavelength tonight because everything seems to be pulling and distracting and tugging at me. And usually I'm like a rock. Nothing penetrates. Nothing gets in. Nothing gets out. You know, one of those. And tonight, especially tonight, unusually. I'm not stable. <laughs> Can you imagine me not being stable? Hmm. Well, I was trying to recall. Uh, I did recall something, and then I lost it. And it was a, a dork table talk when me and Mary used to do the uh, dork table program. And, uh, well, I lost the concept. So keep those taters off your dick, Flash somebody. I didn't have any taters on my Oh, wait a minute. There's a. Quote, Voldemort himself created his worst enemy just as tyrants everywhere do. Have you any idea how much tyrants fear the people they oppress? All of them realize that one day amongst their many victims, there is sure to be one who will, who rises against them and strikes back. J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, and the Half-Blood Prince. Oh, that's what all that, okay, that's that Harry Potter stuff. Whoa. Not a bad quote. <coughs> ah, the dictators. Keep them off my dick. Yeah, my wife will probably think that's a good idea, too. So I'm going to try that, Mr. Grimner. Uh, hmm. Yeah, what a mess tonight turned out to be. I've been so uh, easily distracted by a few words on a computer screen. Hey, <laughs> fuck you, Rob. <laughs> I did not. Rob's being mean to me, Grim. Stop it. Make him stop. <laughs> Make him stop. Let's see. What have I found out recently that's of, uh, it's got any value to it? Whoop, and I've, oh, see, I did it again. I had the damn mute thing. Uh, me and Vinny were talking about hemp products the other night. You guys got me jumping. I'm stoned out of my my squat. <laughs> anyway, and uh, we were talking about hemp coming back. and Levi Strauss has already gone on a promotion. I don't know what country it was in. I didn't think of checking that part out. But they're making hemp jeans. Now, I didn't say what percentage of hemp they were using for the genes, so it's probably a mix. And even if it is, I mean, just having the hemp in there will give it a, a, a life of its own, shall we say. Wow, now they got me getting penetrated and all kinds of terrible, horrible things on the RLM feed. It's nice to be loved. But, hey, can you guys back up about 10 feet? <laughs> Don't love me so much. It's starting to hurt. <laughs> I got your girlfriend mad at you. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. No, I, I figured it out. I saw the red button. But, man, I've been coughing and playing around. And But what do you mean? I got your... You got my girlfriend mad at you? Wait, I got your girlfriend mad at you. Wow, that's weird. Usually the only girlfriend I could get mad is at me is my own. Okay, no, she got mad at Rob. Oh, I'm good. Look at this. I finally deciphered that, Rob. I'm stoned, so I was reading it all out of context. But I'm sorry. Did I do that? Well, you know, there's a guy on the um, RLM chat. He does uh, special services for people. He helps those who can't help themselves. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, she told you to quit being mean to me. Oh fuck! I don't. I don't take anything Rob says mean to me. I think Rob's just sarcastic, and that's the way Rob is. So hey, Becca, nice to see you uh, getting mad at Rob though for all of us, because Rob doesn't. He don't care. <laughs> Rob could. Rob could give a shit. I know that. Anyway, 
my partner on, on the radio program I do on Tuesdays doesn't seem to appreciate that side of you. He likes it when he does it. I don't know. I don't understand the, the conflict. But, you know, it's not my business, I suppose. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a, a bystander. I'm, I'm like watching this, um, these two monkeys throw shit back and forth at each other. And fortunately, I'm not getting it hit by any of it. So I don't care if they do it. <laughs> it doesn't bother me any. But it seems to bother Vincent. So if Vin, Vinny needs to learn something here. I hope he learns it soon. This, you guys arguing is really bad. It's not like Hansel. Hansel wants that kind of shit. You know, some people just don't get along because they don't understand what the other guy's saying. And then sometimes there's people like me and Hansel that we don't want to understand what the other guy is saying. We just want to shit on what the other guy is saying. And I think, uh, wow, he come in the other day. And I don't even have to say anything. If I don't want to speak ever to Hansel again, uh, there's so many people that do it for me now. <laughs> and not for me. They have the same, sh they feel the same way, so I can just sit back and read. I don't have to type anything clever, because they're typing it all in my stead. And uh, the guy doesn't stop, so wow, what a performance. Uh, my hat's off to whatever Hansel thinks he is. It's a great show. And don't stop, because you remind me of why <laughs> every day. You're a reminder of why I'm so fucking lucky in life is because I don't do what you do <laughs> so that I, too, would be a miserable fuck everywhere I go and just insult everybody and be you know, nasty. <laughs> it's, it's good to be reminded of what you don't want to be as well as reminded of what you do want to be because it's a choice. I can... I mean, apparently, I got Rob's girlfriend mad at him, so I have powers beyond that of mortal man. <laughs> I'm like half Vulcan and half Klingon and half human. I can do anything my mind, I set my mind to do. See, and then Mike's teasing Rob, and everybody's back to normal. But hmm, personality's still going to clash. That's just the nature of the game, I suppose. I don't know any way around it. And uh, when me and Cert clash, I just try not to say anything, make it worse. Oh, cause I have it. If you haven't noticed uh, with my writing skills, I have a sharp tongue. I can be kind of rude. So, yeah, when I have a real argument with somebody I'm really alive with, uh, I try to tone it down and not make it worse than it already is and try to figure out a way to fix it or abandon it completely. One or the other, you can't. I can't. Uh, I know what you can do. Other people can do whatever they can live with. I find what I can live with as I age is getting more limiting. You know, the uh, the necessity to live an honest life and try to squeeze a little more time out of this uh, game we're in. It seems to work better for me. Uh, the cleaner I live, the better the results. And it and it started out just with, you know, thinking some things. Then I started eating some things. And, you know, the the food intake. Um the additives. Learned about them. What was that? I I'm so bad with the names, but uh the rose hip from Circle, uh turmeric from uh Larry and then Miss Mary's got me with a few lotions that if I ever get a, a even the inkling of a headache if I put a little peppermint oil two drops on the back of my neck and in two minutes whatever was coming is gone it's over and that worked for me okay and then baking soda who I don't know who the hell I got that one from but I know somebody else on the real liberty media that swears by the shit as an additive to your diet to make you feel better. So, hmm, that's two of us that buy that shit. And we're still alive. And we're we're not as old as some, but we're older than most of you. And there's a few guys on the RLM that are a little older than me and Grim, but not too many of them. Uh, so, you know, sitting in our seats of hierarchy, the white supremacist hierarchy, patriarchy of the real liberty media dot com. Ha, fucking ha. See what I mean? 
you know, it doesn't, uh, all the things that we've been taught to believe in, in a sense of reality, they don't even have a, they don't even weigh in on the scale because just because of, uh, Grimm's color and maleness, he's the guy that runs the freaking site. Well, when it was, uh, world truth, it was, it was a guy and then a girl bought the place didn't change anything it was still the same but it was run by a female so it's not this patriarchy it's whoever owns the place you treat them accordingly because they own the fucking place it's just like a damn bar if you walk into a bar and start calling the damn bartender names you better know that bartender really good or you're going to end up not being served and not welcome so you know there's um, protocols depends on who you know what you know how you know all these things that uh, can't be changed. This is an old site. It's not like Grimm just started. He's been around for a long fucking time. So, hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, Vinny's typing all fucked up and getting himself in arguments. Well, I'm glad you fixed that. Um, I hope Moose reads it so that you can sort that out. Because, you yeah, know, just... Uh, that's what I'm always saying about this kind of stuff is you interpret what you write when you're saying it, when you're writing it. The person that's reading it gets it one way and then I read it and I get it another way. So I'm over here laughing at something you wrote and you might not even have meant it, was, it to be funny. I took it as a joke. <laughs> so, ah, uh, you know, we, we've all got, uh, we've all got our opinions to bear. Uh, look up the word opinion. It is not what we think it means. It's it's just a subjective feeling about a thing or an idea or a person or a dog or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be f based on fact or reality. It's just how you feel about something. So to quote your opinion, uh, we've been one more time. We've been misled and taught some really bad uh, bad protocols. Yeah. Yeah, follow, well, yeah, Rob, I mean, there's unwritten laws that we follow constantly, like, when I'm in the grocery store, I don't push and shove people that, you know, they get, if they bump into me, I don't act out in anger, it's a grocery store, you're, you're moving around with boxes and, you know, carrying these things, and it throws everybody off a little bit, so if somebody accidentally bumps into me in the grocery store, I'm just calm about it, and they're usually freaked out because I look scary. Oh, no, I pissed off the long hair guy. Is he going to explode? No, you bumped into my arm. It's just part of living. And I, th I think that a lot more people behave that way than don't. But the ones that behave out of the pocket, they're the ones that get all the fucking attention. See? You know, if, you just w if you're just a normal Joe out there in the world minding your fucking business... You're probably like me, and the only thing anybody would have to say about you would be if your appearance is in any way out of the whatever norm is, because a lot of people don't like that word. But your behavior, wow. Your behavior is, you know, it's representative of a lot of things. My wife is trying to trying to cut off my air supply with her weed roll tonight. And I'm participating, so I'm going to blame her for forcing me to do it against my will. <laughs> no, that explained the pause parts where I was coughing my lungs up. But it's not my fault. I'm addicted to hashish. And if I don't smoke it, you guys are going to suffer. <laughs> I do radio shows about stuff that you already know. And repeat them until you've been told 50,000 times. Mm -hmm -hmm. So, Becca, not proud of myself, man. I was telling Cirque, I think I'm the only person on the reallibertymedia.com chat that gets called a, a, a useless, drug-addled hippie while Hansel leaves the room to go you know, gather tears at Starbucks. And I see him leave and come and go all the time, but I get the attention when I push him far enough. You know, wow, now I want to retire. I want to pass on my throne to somebody else. 
I don't really want to replace my Hansel though. I think I'm going to I'm going to shoot for in this year of nat 20 and 19. I think I'm going to try to retire my addiction to Hansel and replace it with mushrooms. <laughs> I'm going to, how would you think, honey? Is that a good idea? I'll replace my Hansel addiction with mushrooms and whiskey. Sure. Ah, got a sure from the wife. It's our own, baby. We're going to, we're coming to you live. Hey, I wonder if I had to do a, a show. I, you'd have to produce it for me, but I bet I could do it on shrooms. Read some links. What would I read links? If I was on shrooms, but reading links, what would I want to read about? Hmm. How about? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln and all the good work he did while he was uh, leading the country to war. You know, a war, a fucking war that nobody wanted to fight. And it was all based on a bunch of lies because then nobody got freed. If anything happened, what happened was we were all enslaved at the end of it by a lying sack of shit government led by a fucking idiot named Abraham in a pointy fucking hat. Oh, <sighs> man. I mean, just the appearance should have told you guys, hey, you can't trust this guy as far as you can throw him. But no, you know, judge things all fucking backwards, like usual. Catch on, hey, he said something I like. Well, yeah, so. Broken clock is twice, twice, right, twice a day. Anyway, but I think, yeah, I think I could do that. Mushrooms and talk about Abraham Lincoln. Because I tried it tonight and I was only doing weed. So, no, don't do that again. I, I, I'm hitting it way too hard and end up coughing myself up. So, give me a break, boss. My wife is trying to help me enjoy my evening, as she often does. But, um, anyway, so where was I? Now, just ranting and roving on and on tonight about nothing in particular. The, uh, the mental state of the chitter-chatter in the social room. You know, I wonder what, what makes us behave the way we do sometimes. You know, is it topic or is it, you know, the like the things that you read about. When somebody's foundation is rattled by a truth, they get pissed. Okay. Well, what defines what that truth is that rattled the person reading? So people, maybe like in the back of their mind, they know these things. So they're looking for the results, but like a doctor, they're misdiagnosing something because they only know a little bit of what they're looking for. So they see a similar sign and think, aha, I've got this figured out, when they really don't. And uh, hopefully uh, whatever's going on can be rectified. And if not, leave it alone. I don't see nothing wrong with burning a bridge behind you if nothing comes from being on that bridge except your own personal inconvenience and un being uncomfortable while you're on the fucking bridge. Nah, walk over it and burn it all down be behind you and leave it. That's the best way to do it. Uh, did Flash just do the puppy gets to go for a walk dance? Play a fiddle, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, Rob, I've been, uh, my wife rolled a really good one tonight and I carelessly have been hitting it like it was a regular one. And, uh, well, the coughing, the coughing, t uh, was very bad. So that was what that was about. But no, actually I, I'm just, what am I doing? I'm just, uh, throwing out some deep rooted thinking you know my deep root thinking not yours because i don't know what you guys think about you guys might think about spaceships and aliens and going to mars and satellites and all that fun stuff they made movies about it for what 50 60 years 70 years it's been a while but all these old you know i've watched some of the ones from the 40s and the 50s to see you know were they were they setting up the the stage, you know, for people to accept things like the, the moon landing when they saw it on TV. Because that's what made it real. That's why people were so adamant about it. I believe they made a moon landing. I saw the damn thing on TV. Because they couldn't give up that. That illusion 
that the television is. Oh, my dog's over there messing with her um, knitting stuff to get her attention. <laughs> She's a smart dog. She knows how to get your attention to pay attention to her. Anyway. Oh, Woody's standing up for the bong took. Well, I'm I'm sorry I set such a bad example by having to pause to catch my breath because I was coughing my lungs out. Flash! This is Rob Works. That was in reference to retiring hands and doing shrooms and whiskey. Oh, did I do that? Did I get, I got rid of hands? Oh, I'm so happy. Poor guy. I wish he would just stop. He's such pain. But, oh, well. Ah, oh, then I did that. I will. I will dance all over the place. Mm. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm still, um, I don't know. Sometimes doing the, doing the show solo puts me in a, in a different way of speaking and thinking. When Vinny's here or Mary or whoever's with me, it gives me somebody to talk to and get a response or try to get a response. When it's just me, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, portray this thought that I have going on in my mind. How do you tell somebody else some of the crazy shit that I, you know, the, the things that I think, that I think are crazy. Like, I can see the reality of a fallen, broken fucking government at every fucking level my entire life. But my peers can't. My peers always resort to, but who would build the roads? Who who would protect us from the bad guys? And when you try to explain the, the reality of it is, without the police, there wouldn't be any need to protect yourself from the bad guys you'd already be doing it the, the police are a means of disarming you so you don't shoot people for fucking you over that's what the cops are for they'll do it and they don't even care if you did anything anymore they just shoot you they got a call they scared for their life they shot you bye bye but the good side of it is you can sue and in a good couple of years you can get yourself a nice settlement of fiat money in a bank at a central bank, a year choice. But average Joe doesn't really pay attention to the details. And I know I harp and harp and harp, but uh, who owns the money? There's a half a dozen people on the main feed that would go, Hey, I know who owns that money. It's not you. But your average Joe doesn't know that. And for all you folks out there in radio land that have not heard the show before, yes, it's true. Just look up little things like fractional reserve banking on uh, YouTube still got it they haven't banned it yet they're going to eventually this we're we're going to get all of our stuff that we our foundation is built on is going to be sucked up and and deleted by uh, the big players over a period of time they've already got uh, my doctor I had a beautiful link about that uh, it's called death by medicine Beautiful in the sense of it actually had a doctor exposing the freaking Rockefeller medicine from her perspective, telling the user what she thought of it. And she was so unimpressed with it, she lives in fucking Panama to avoid being arrested by America. So, for speaking out against Rockefeller medicine in the first place. It's not a popular stand to take. It, uh, Big Pharma controls a lot more than we're aware of. Uh, we get told stuff, and we know a little bit, and, but if you really take a close look at this game that we're in, and who's controlling what, where you're at on the chessboard is relative to what's being controlled. And it just strikes me as the bigger populations are the people that are going to suffer the, the worst of all, of whatever's going to come. Even if it's one of like a, a grim meteor, it's there's going to be a mortality rate. There always is, to no matter what disasters, people survive it. And but this way, you know, gar garbaging over the wastelands, looking for brains to eat. Uh, what? I'm going to kill zombies. What, too, man, that's too much fucking television for me. I'll tell you right there. I think if the there was an end of the world here that the neighbors would be looking out for each other just like they always have and just as distantly as they do they're not a cling on fucking group here they're uh, very independent of each other everybody's got their own way to do shit and you know it's like a 
have you ever been seen the links about people that got housing associations? And yeah, they get fined for their aesthetics, not being up to par and all this. And on this one street we live on, some people's houses are immaculate and every blade of grass has got a fucking, you know, cut slice in it. And the next house looks like the Adams family lives in it. <laughs> it does and there's no uh there's no code. People don't force each other here to to comply to shit. Now this is in the little place I'm at. In the city, of course, things are different. The more crowded you are, the tighter the regulation. So, hmm. Wow. Of course, I guess it's also relative to how expensive things are where you're at. The bigger the... Oh, like, what was it? I sent a link about Chicago. <laughs> Chicago has... Like, uh, I can't remember how many hundred thousand employees city state and all this all these employees of the state making a hundred thousand a year <laughs> it's like wow how do you fucking support this uh they don't you know, they're borrowing money to pay uh wages or contracts <laughs> <laughs> and we do this every all of it the only the only government employee that's not being a burden on the government <laughs> is trump <laughs> but i'll tell you this he's not not allowing them to pay his expenses i'll bet when that you know that uh air force one goes up he's not saying oh i this one's on me guys let me pay for this <laughs> <laughs> I doubt I doubt Donald's doing that. Do you think he's doing that, honey? No. <laughs> when he's waving goodbye suckers on that ramp to the to get on his, you know, big old jet plane. <laughs> he's not nice. Oh yeah, I've got this. I this one's on me, people. I'm paying for this. No. Guess who's paying for it? Nobody. They add it to the freaking bill. <laughs> Twenty one trillion and counting. I mean what what's a couple of extra million for flying the president around? Who's gonna notice? Twenty one trillion dollars with a T people. I don't even know how to describe how big twenty one trillion anything is, let alone dollars. So if this is anything, I know I say this over and over, but if this is anything more than, uh, like, look right here, I'll steal from Grimner. Grimner calls it entertainment. Yeah, that. how can you look at it as real is the, the point I get from that comment. Not that it's funny, not that it makes me smile, not that uh, I feel better than anybody else because, you know, the same, we're, we're all living in the same fucking thing. It's how you look at it that matters, you know, how you recognize it. Does it does it empower you or do you empower it? Huh? 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 Which which way is it? Is that government covering your back so you're safe? Are you safe from those terrorists that are coming? Take your freedom from you? Huh? 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 <laughs> oh, Vinny's wearing shoes. A size 9 on the right and a size 11 on the left. <laughs> Size 20. <laughs> oh, man. Shoe phones. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I missed that part, but I was I was losing my mind. You guys really messed with me tonight. Wonder why. I have gone many, many years without paying much attention to the chat. And the last couple months, I've noticed more interest in what you guys are talking about than usual. Usually, I got married to do it or Vinny to do it or I don't know now I got now I'm curious what are they talking about and uh, from one minute to the next you never know what to expect on the main feed of the real liberty media dot com and not to mention when they're not fucking around they put up some really good links I mean some of the best stuff there is to know you're going to find it on the chat room site uh, I'm not a big fan of the Facebook and the Twitter and all that crap but I know that most of the folks that use the real liberty media use those two sources because that's where that's where all the people are you want to get their attention now sadly the opinion i hold i'm very prejudiced and i think that people that are holding on to the shirt tail of the guy that's leading they need to let go and it, it, 
holding on is the problem. And your reasons for holding on do not interest me, not one bit. I don't care if your you know, grandmother is the only way she can find you is through Facebook. You're still supporting Facebook. No thank you. And that's my stand. I do the same with Israel, Big Oil, Monsanto, <laughs> all the major banks. <laughs> I especially don't like Goldman Sachs. Mostly because, well... They're in the freaking American government making all our fucking financial decisions. And, well, Denmark on the financial scale is not up there with the United States, so shit flows downhill, fuckers. Thank you very much. Man, if Israel wasn't running America, I don't think I'd be half as pissed off as I am. But, if you do a little looking and you check into shit and you see who your enemy is... Your enemy is the fucker you can't insult. And who can you not insult right now? Hell, people will go, Islam, you can't insult Islam. Yeah, well, you know who you can insult. Israel. <laughs> Try it sometime. If you post it, it'll be yanked. If you like it, it eventually it'll be what hidden from the, the main view. They don't want people to have an opinion about anything that fucking matters. They just want you to follow... The things they want us to follow. Hmm. Wonder how that works. Hmm. In my opinion, uh, which matters a whole lot, they've kept us at war for a long fucking time. You know, either with or without our consent, what difference does it make? <coughs> You know, when you have a government pulling strings the way they do and taking out other countries based on just bullshit stories that the press will carry, and then even after they're exposed and proven to be lying sacks of shit, doesn't change nothing that they do. There's no, there's no payback, there's no justice, there's nothing. There's just this wake of fucking destruction that, well, you know, for a couple of extra billion dollars, we'll repair all the shit we broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're sorry. Oh, we were aiming for the Arab Embassy. We seem to have missed <laughs> by a few hundred miles. But anyway, so where am I going with all that? Uh, the truth of the whole thing is, it's it's probably like a table of these rich fuckers from all the different groups all sit together, and then the people below them. They tell their underlings, okay, now you have these guys fight and those guys fight and move this here, move that there. And But the contact with that upper echelon is, you will never see it. And the people that do it, they would never talk to us. So this illusion of um, <laughs> world leaders, and no, we're, we're just being scammed and hustled left and right. And if you don't believe me, then I guess you're not listening to this crap, because that's what I believe. Ah, uh, let's see. Grimnir says, Flash, BB is on the bubble. At least that's the latest fiction. On the bubble. I'm not sure what on the bubble means, but I think he got reelected. Is his, uh, you know, their selection game is probably the same as the one we play in the States. I don't know. They got a selection game they're playing here, too, but there's so many freaking choices. I don't know how they could rig an election in this country, but I'm sure they can. They must, but wow, there's a lot of, uh, well, there's so few people in that, you know, that run the country here, and then there's so few people that live here, so they're kind of accountable to the people they represent. It's a lot, it's a lot different, hard to explain on a radio program without a given, you know, topic and example. Because my favorite one is Freetown. Freetown is uh, an anarchist squat. And uh, in major cities that have abandoned sky rises, well, not maybe hotels. I, when I was in San Francisco in the Tenderloin, they had a lot of uh, hotels that had, had uh, or apartment buildings where, uh, They'd fallen behind on code, and the owner couldn't get them licensed, so they they were supposedly abandoned. But there were people squatting in the buildings, living in them. <coughs> and I knew that because in those days, I liked to go sit up on the roof on the 
edge of the building and smoke a joint and watch the people walking underneath on the road. And I'd hear people having, you know, doing their business in their in the apartments that they were squatting in. So squatting was, I was um, familiar with it when I was in my young 20s, running into it in San Francisco that way. People would tell you, yeah, we're, we're just crashing here. No, nobody owns this. We're just left open. You can do what you want. The level of violence was minimal. I mean, I didn't have any, I never had any problem with people when I was, Three, four o'clock in the morning being smoking a joint or something on a building top or walking down the street or whatever. Uh, now, I've I've read there's horrible things like uh, people shitting in the streets. Now, I know there's no nicer way to put it, so I just got it out of the way that way. But mm, I see people link, put links up. And I'm not going to open this stuff to prove it one way or the other. But just like the you know like the NSA thing, and the threat of being spied on is all you need. You don't even need to be spied on after somebody tells you. If you don't believe this, do this. Try this in the morning when you are in your day. Go knock on your neighbor's door, look him in the face, and go. You know what? I'm going to spy on you, and then turn around and walk away. Don't ever bring it up again. Don't ever say it again. Just and when he confronts you, ignore it. And that man is going to be one paranoid motherfucker trying to figure out what you know about him. Because that's how we actually are. The threat is all you need. Well, maybe I'll do a show with Vinny about the threat. I'll write that one down. That might be a good topic for In a Perfect World next week with my buddy Vincenzo. Um, hmm, maybe not, though. <laughs> but, yeah, the threatened word. You know, I think we'll call it that. The, th or the threat in word. See, well, I'll work on it from here. But it's all you need. Uh, hmm, how do you prove that to another person on a radio podcast without damaging their psyche? Uh, it's a topic you don't want to fuck with. It's, uh, hmm, what would it be similar to? Uh, the positive and the negative. You know, if whatever one you want, if you make it known in your mind somehow <laughs> I don't know how to define this to other folk but if I look for negative I can find negative if I look for positive I can find positive but you've got to choose you don't you can't change your mind in the middle you know whatever you're after you're going to find it so be aware of of you know your own part in what you're getting out of life is what you're putting out in life so like when me and Vincent were having our little disagreement, I think Vinny was not paying any freaking attention, had no idea how I was reacting to what he was saying. He was just saying what he was saying. And when he realized, hey, wait a minute, oh, that's pissing you off. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Well, you didn't. Well, it sure sounded like you did. So, hmm. And that's what I'm, I'm getting at over the, all this is uh, whatever we want, we have. And whatever we want, well, whatever we want beyond what we have, that's a little bit more subjective because there's things in life we're taught to measure in ways that they can't be measured in. And we don't, I don't think we recognize the truly important shit as truly important. Like the, in how we get our water, how we get our electricity is not as important as that we get it. So the... The service is more important than the quality. So we're settling for service instead of insisting on, I want the best quality. This is 2019, god damn it. And I'm not settling for 1965 second-rate shit no more. I want the good stuff, and I want it now. We know you got the technology. Serve it up. But no, we're, that's not going to happen. What is going to happen is uh, they're going to make a new market for battery-powered cars to appease a few people that see that as progress and they're going to keep burning us with this fucking oil and no matter what they got all that glut of oil they have to use it if they don't use it what are they going to fucking do their whole game collapses and if you look at the biggest users of fuel military <laughs> People think we use a ton of shit going to work and keeping our houses. No, you don't. Not not nearly as much as the military. 
So, hmm. How do you go on a collective strike against a, a government organization that does nothing but destroy everything it touches? But claims, look at all our success. We've got, um, and we did, um, and not to mention we're going to, um, but when you look at it for real, serious light, there's nothing for them to talk about. They get rich. People that uh, get voted into office to do this, and they never do anything for anybody but their self. <laughs> their, their self and their, you know, their group at the expense of everybody that's not capable of saying no. But I'm not one of those people. I am very capable of saying no. And if they ever ask me, whoever they are, <laughs> I will more than likely get myself in all kinds of trouble and tell them no. But that hasn't happened yet. So hmm. who knows what's going to bring a no? <laughs> and wh why does it matter so much to us what other people think or type or read or what religion they practice or all this other crap? Because I see dark-skinned people occasionally here in this very tidy-whitey community. And even uh, even they smile at me. Not all of them. There's a few. There's a few holdouts, but out of the you know out of the many, there's always going to be one or two people that don't like the look of you, whatever that may be. So I don't. I don't generally blame it on them. You know, who knows what it is about me that doesn't ring you know ring their happy bell, <laughs> and it happens so so rarely in the, in the public thing here that I, I expect it more than I get it. <laughs> if I was in America, I could tell you right now, with my opinions about shit, I would last about 10, maybe 12 minutes in a in an American bar right now, because my side of what I think is so against the, the mainstream, you know, the mainstream is still either supporting, you got to remember this, folks, they're supporting somebody else, Trump, Hillary, Obama, Bush, the you know the the faces in the public eye the government people and they got they've got support why what the fuck do any of these morons do except suck up the fucking good shit <laughs> they were they were born into positions of fucking wealth and power just like the just like the kings and the and the princes and all this shit that they claim to be fighting against and they're just a big part of that whole fucking game they just call them different names so that you don't know it and with that i'm gonna call it a 20 percent off and i'm gonna do my lineup the way i always do it i tried straying off and opening shit it doesn't work i i get in more trouble when i i just make it up as i go on this <laughs> i think i got the our lineup memorized, except for for uh, Chuck Ocelli, and he does the uh, the Ocelli Factor on uh, Channel 14 at eight o'clock. Uh, every I think it's Monday through Friday. If I did that wrong, if you're listening, open up the RealLibertyMedia.com, and there is a schedule page for the programming. But at the end of the show, we like to do this. I don't know why. I I kind of followed along the dots and. Uh, I got a comfortable way to do the program like other people do. Like I like to say hi to the bots and bodies in the beginning. And I picked that up from Mary and Grimner over the years. They do it. Vinny does it. So, yeah. We uh, try to have a little conformity around here that, uh, you know, it's not syrupy and stupid, but it's uh, dependable. And one of those things is we like to tell people what's coming up in the coming up week. And we're at Thursday night, so tomorrow at 1 o'clock on the East Coast, Ponder Gander Time with Vincenzo. And uh, that's 1 o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, then 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grammy, on Wednesday and Friday, does the Rocket Chair Podcast. Then on Friday night at 11 o'clock, ah, Grim and Moose Girl doing Freaker's Ball. Ha ha ha, top that. Then on Saturday, I come back with the dork table. And if you've been doing the dork table with me, you know what I know. Who knows? <laughs> it, could, it could be me and Vinny. It could be me and Vinny and Mary. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll hijack Grimner and hold him hostage at a dork table. 
he's he's been doing the grim leftovers so he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of opinions about a lot of topics might be interesting to pick old grimner's brain and instead of having him read some text he could tell us what he thinks on the dork table podcast and then sunday morning he comes in with the blues and we do the blues into uh, the trivia game that's for you competitive nerds out there that like to play trivia. I'm one of them. I like to play. I just don't win all the time. Uh, we play that and then into Hal Anthony um, behind the woodshed at 3 o'clock on the Sunday on the West Coast. Then Monday night, Grim comes on. Uh, Grim leftovers at 7 o'clock on the East Coast doing the stuff he didn't have time to do on the Freaker's Ball because he was playing all that annoying music and it got into his, you know, reading text time. <laughs> and then Tuesday night, well, Tuesday, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, uh, me and Vinny come back with In a Perfect World where we argue about who owns the color blue and other interesting topics. And Wednesday, Grammy at 7 on the uh, East Coast doing the Rocket Chair podcast. And then on Thursday, 2 o'clock East Coast, I try to be back with another 20% off. And uh, I don't know, tonight I was doing a little bit of both. I got a little, uh, I don't know, what's the right word? I'm looking for some balance with the uh, obvious discomfort that we're all having chatting. We should be getting along with each other a lot better than we are. I sure would like to see that. Uh, I'm not good. I'm not a good example of it, but I've got this radio thing, so I have the ability to, you know, put forth my personal opinion about something, and I can't fix it. So if there's a lack of in of interaction with me, that's because I'm I can't be I don't want to be fighting with anybody. I'd rather block them than argue at this point. So, you know, I've got Hansel for that until I give him up. But if I, I'm getting to the point where, you know, if I'm having arguments with you that are taking uh, any step to reality, I'm blocking it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Anyway, thank you for hanging out with me on a Thursday night on 20% off. Over and out.